千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware. As we all ready ourselves for this sacred process of the Tao. So I'm going to start with the personal, like the things that you do for yourself, and then I want to expand that to things that you do with other people, the things that you can do in the world. So these are just examples. You can probably expand from here and think of even more small actions,、uh, small steps that you can take. To make a big difference in your life, and I want to start with the most accessible and common example that I can think of, an example that's tied to the material world: saving money. The reason why I say that is because, using my、uh, piggy bank metaphor here as an example, saving a little bit every day will make a huge difference in the long run, and the idea. Is that once you've saved up a substantial amount, you can be investing in different things. You can allow the magic of compound interest to make the huge difference for you. And you can be resting, you can be sleeping, but your money, the money, the money that you have invested, that is subjected to to、um, compound interest and Uh, dividends and other benefits, they are still working for you even as you take a rest and go to sleep. Working for you all the time. So in the long run, over decades, it makes a huge difference. So it's something that you can do for yourself as an example. Now I want to take it from the material realm to the spiritual realm. So I want to use cultivation as an example. Of something small that you can do for yourself. When I start this meeting, I say that the journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet, and you may be more familiar with the other phrasing that it begins with one step. So either way, the journey of a thousand miles is composed of many steps, and every step is a small, tiny increment along the journey. It's like a penny put into the piggy bank. It doesn't seem like much, but over time, it builds up to a tremendous difference. So daily cultivational practice becomes important, and for all of you, I know that at least you have a weekly practice that we can gather together and talk about the Tao. That's a that's a good step in the right direction. Let's also talk about what we do for other people that can make a big difference for them, even though it may not be, it may not seem that big.、Uh, and I want to relate a couple of true stories. The first one is friend of a friend, someone that I know indirectly. It's a true story. So this person discovered, found another human being who was in distress. So this happened only recently. So the other person was the victim of a、uh, of an incident where her purse was stolen while she was in the grocery store. Now, as you can probably imagine, she was distressed. She was she was angry. She was afraid. She didn't know what to think. She was beside herself. So our good Samaritan、uh, immediately connected with that and you know helped her. The very,、uh, the most important thing, the very first thing that he did was to settle her down, to provide comfort, to console her, to calm her down,、uh, take talk her off the ledge is the expression that we would commonly use. So then, 
once she had more of a functional state of mind, he helped her figure out exactly what was stolen, what was gone, so that she will know how to recover from that. If it is a credit card that was stolen, then he wanted to make a note of it so that she can contact the credit card company, maybe the bank, to get that card canceled. So many little details. So he was patient in walking her through that entire process. Then he accompanied her in going home and coordinated for a locksmith to change out her locks. This gave her an immeasurable feeling of security that she was fearful and afraid about possible intrusion because her keys were in the purse. Now, with the locksmith taking care of her home, she felt much, much safer. So he didn't think that he did all that much. After all, it was the locksmith that did the work. But for him to be a comforting presence to the distressful situation at that time, it meant everything to her. And then the other one, also a true story, is about a gentleman. His name is Jess. He went home. He visited home. He came from a, a small town. And when he got the news that his mother passed away, he went back home to pay his respects to say goodbye. Now, he was especially grief stricken about this. He had been very close to his mother and he always thought that he would have kids. So for her to have grandkids before she passed, but she passed unexpectedly early. So he was hit really hard. So on his way back from that trip, he boarded his plane. When he got to his seat, he saw that there was a young man who was sitting in the seat, which was a window seat. Now, normally he would say, oh, it's no big deal. I'll just sit, you know, in the seat that the young man vacated. It's not a problem. In this particular case, though, he wanted to sit by the window so he can take one last look at his hometown as another way to say goodbye to his deceased mother. So he politely asked the young man to move. Uh, apologizing profusely. Uh, the young man had no trouble with that and definitely uh, helped him into that seat. So as the flight took off, he's looking at the scene outside his window that everything hit all at once, even though he said, I'm a grown man, but that time, that day, the tears started coming. He was just thinking about all that, feeling sad, feeling bereft, Suddenly, he felt a tap on his shoulder. It was the young man. The young man asked if he was okay. And he mumbled and said, oh, oh, I'm fine. You know, he said, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to deal with the grief, saying goodbye to someone that I loved very much. And the young man said, well, we have a three-hour flight ahead of us. If you feel like you need to talk about it, I'm here to listen. And so he thanked the young man. He did not feel like talking at that time. He said that uh, it was okay. He really appreciated it. But then the rest of the flight, he was just basking in the warm glow of this help, this gesture of help. He thought that, well, normally when I take a plane, I notice me and everybody else trying to avoid having a conversation with a stranger. Now, this young man was actually volunteering his time for the rest of the flight to speak with me, even though I'm not taking him up on it. Wow, it is making me feel like I am not so alone in the world. So he wanted to relate, relate that to everyone as a reminder that occasionally your offer to help may not seem like a whole lot to you and it may not seem like it's bearing fruit maybe the other person says yeah uh, thank you but no thanks but the mere act of offering the help that action does something all by itself never underestimate the power 
of small actions, small gestures, an offer of a kindness is itself a kindness. Then let me move on from that scale, what we do for other people to what we do for the world. Here, I want to talk about the handshake. It's a handshake from the 80s. Back in the 80s, the world encountered AIDS for the first time. So not much back in those days was known about AIDS initially. There was a widespread misconception that AIDS could be could spread from skin contact. This was a known misconception. Scientists, medical professionals assured everyone this would not be the case, but the fear remained. The person who did the most to destroy that fear, completely demolish that fear, was actually Princess Diana. She decided to do something about this fear. She made regular trips to hospitals, visiting the AIDS patients. She made it a point to shake the hands of the AIDS patients there under the glaring media spotlight. Many pictures of her shaking hands with AIDS patients spread all over the world. This was the handshake, one of many that shook the world. She absolutely abolished the fear. She probably did not know anything about Buddhism, I'm just guessing, but she was a bodhisattva, a goddess of compassion. Now, of course, you may say, I'm not a celebrity. I don't have the platform like she had. I don't have the voice. I can't do anything even close. To that, I'm actually gonna respectfully disagree. I would say you are very powerful, but you may not realize the full extent of your power. And I'm gonna use a very simple example of planting a tree. A small action, a simple thing, anyone can do that. And yet, as time goes by, as the, cre as the tree that you plant grows tall, it can potentially give rise to more trees. It can do so much with its immediate environment and that impact goes on long after you have left this world. So I would say something simple that you can do, you only have to look through the eyes of the Tao to see how powerful you really are in doing things that can potentially ripple out to affect the entire world. So those are the examples that I wanted to highlight just as a way to give you some ideas about actions. Let's take Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time, may the Dell fill you with peace and happiness.